all about retainer fees. I have been asked recently to do a video on retainer fees. What are they about? How do they work? So forth and so on. Uh, specifically, I have been asked to do one on buyer retainer fees or retainer fees paid by buyers. So let's get into it, shall we? Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors and director of the Real Estate Academy of America with a quick video on how retainer fees work. So let me get to the contract form and show you what we've got going on. So in the Georgia Association of Realtors, the GAR form, you have form F149 retainer fee agreement. And let me explain what is involved and then I will go more specifically with the form. So a retainer fee is due and payable when deposited or upon receipt. So in other words, if your client, and again, it is mostly buyer clients uh, that are paying retainer fees, when they sign that Georgia Association of Realtors Retainer Fee Exhibit, GAR F149, it does a couple things to keep in mind. It does um, reference a brokerage agreement. So it's not a standalone exhibit, even though it says exhibit, but it does reference a, a brokerage agreement. So that means the buyer would either have signed a buyer brokerage agreement or a seller brokerage agreement. Again, this is mostly used with buyers. Uh, for sellers, it's, it's just a bit strange to talk about a retainer fee with a seller. Uh, sometimes there will be agents who will collect a marketing fee from a seller. Um, that makes more sense for a seller and a retainer fee to retain the services of a buyer. But nevertheless, it is earned and payable upon receipt, which means non-refundable. So the reason is a real estate agent does provide good and valuable services for a client from the beginning of the relationship. And if a, if a client hires a broker to represent them, then that is the beginning of the good and valuable relationship where the broker via the agent provides, uh, uh, initiates a fiduciary responsibility to that buyer. So regardless of if that buyer ends up finding a house or not, there are still, it is still of value for a real estate professional to provide those services at the beginning of the relationship. So the retainer fee is non-refundable payable upon receipt, and I'll get into where that is spelled out in the exhibit. Many agents, many brokers choose to add a special stipulation uh, that states something to the effect of retainer fee is non-refundable. However, upon closing of this transaction, the retainer fee of X amount of dollars shall be applied as a buyer credit on the closing statement should this be allowable by the lender. So, if you are going to collect a retainer fee, retainer fee in and of itself is non-refundable. If you are going to, if your broker is going to give it back to the buyer as a buyer credit at closing, a couple things. Number one, you need to make sure it is allowable by the lender. And number two, it must be itemized on the closing settlement statement. So you have to indicate that in the instructions to closing attorney. <clears throat> now, whether it is applied as a credit or not, that is a discussion between you and your broker, depending on your broker's policies. So let me show you about the retainer fee itself. Let me go over that. Again, it is the GAR form F149 retainer fee agreement. And it does have a place to fill in an exhibit. And again, it is an exhibit to a brokerage agreement, not an exhibit to a purchase and sale agreement, but an exhibit exhibit to an either buyer brokerage agreement or a seller brokerage agreement, which is the agency agreement. Um, and it does reference that. And so it says at the beginning of the start date of the agency agreement, um, the broker shall provide real estate brokerage services, which are reasonably necessary to fulfill the broker's obligations. Client will pay a retainer uh, to the broker for the services in the amount of X amount of dollars, and as I already mentioned, it says, which is deemed earned upon payment and does not need to be placed in escrow. So this is not trust money. For you agents who have been practicing for a few years, uh, this was a change about five years ago. It used to be trust money. It is no longer 
uh, held as trust money. So it is uh, payable in advance, uh, payable upon receipt. Uh, client maintains control of all decisions, should seek professional advice outside of the broker's uh, expertise, and a broker cannot control future events, therefore cannot be responsible for outcomes related to the client or broker's performance. Performance, And there is a place to sign. Then, as I mentioned, if you do add a special stipulation that the broker does give that retainer fee as a buyer credit upon closing, you would add that special stipulation in that form and in the instructions to closing attorney, which is the Georgia Association of Realtors form F-255, on the second page under paragraph four, um, again, if you're doing this as a buyer's broker, you would complete that information in paragraph 4B, buyer's broker's fees and rebates. And you would itemize there that the broker is giving a rebate uh, of as a buyer credit of this retainer fee back to the buyer upon closing. Hope this contract have helped you out. Uh, again, if you are working with a seller, a lot of times we don't collect a retainer fee for sellers. Uh, but there are a lot of brokers that are collecting a marketing fee, non-refundable marketing fee at time of engaging the services of a broker. So that would be an, a special stipulation, again, on a seller brokerage agreement. Hope this contract tip helped you out. Uh, if you like these, I'd appreciate it if you would click through, browse some of the other videos and playlists, and uh, would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any contract tips, license law tips, and uh, code of ethics tips, and more. Thank you guys so much for watching. Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors and the director of the Real Estate Academy of America, satisfying your needs with service, innovation, and education. Bye. If you liked that video, check out the one here. If you like the content on this entire channel, please click here to subscribe. I try to take even the most complicated of real estate situations and make them crystal clear. See what I did there? Real estate made crystal clear. Thank you guys so much for watching.